Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from The Cinematic Orchestra, To Believe. The Cinematic Orchestra is not a name I expected to get the chance to talk about in 2019. Formed by Jason Swinsco and currently featuring a whole bunch of other people, including uh, Phil France, Luke Flowers, Tom Chant, Larry D. Brown, and Heidi Vogel, as well as many other previous lineup changes. TCO are some longtime Ninja Tune veterans who have created a unique blend of jazzy trip hop that I found absolutely captivating when I was starting out college. They had three previous albums so far. First, there was Motion in 1999, which I still think is excellent. Moody and jazzy, mostly sample-based stuff that sets out to make the outfit live up to its name, totally creating this awesome old-school film noir feel that is just so consistently done well. And the fact that it's mostly sample-based and still all sounds like the same band is even more impressive. And there was Every Day in 2002, which is, had a bit more focus on actual live band approach, but otherwise musically pretty similar to what came before, and I think is a bit less consistent than the debut, but still has a whole bunch of amazing moments. Like Man with a Movie Camera and All Things to All Men. Those two especially have really risen to become among my favorite things ever to come out in Ninja Tune, period. But then in 2007, we got Mafluwa, and I was not quite as sold on that one. I mean, it was fine. It had one track I really liked with As the Stars Fall, and had a decent handful of good moments sprinkled throughout, but... What I liked most about TCO initially was their really jazz-heavy style and nuanced atmospherics that created that sort of old film noir feel to it. And Mafleur was a total reinvention in style towards much more stripped back and simplistic piano and guitar heavy arrangements, creating a super warm and comfortable vibe that was so consistently trying to land emotional impact with so few musical elements. And you know, I'm all for a new change in direction for a band or something more subtle, but <sighs> subtle isn't really the word I'd use to describe that album. It wasn't like Nils Fromm's old melody, where a lot of complex emotion is conveyed with really simplistic compositions. My floor felt too simple even for that purpose. Like, it was the musical equivalent of a glass of warm milk. And I really don't like Patrick Wilson's voice while I'm at it, but never mind that. But from what I understand, that album was also uh, much more of a commercial success than the other two, and I very much appear to be in the minority of people who found it underwhelming. So take me with a grain of salt on any of that. But whatever, that album was 12 years ago. Needless to say, I was not expecting a comeback at this point, or even really thinking about the cinematic orchestra at all. But I was still excited to hear what they had to offer. I mean, the song lengths on this new one go, all go on for six, seven, nine, one, eleven minute tracks. That had me excited for maybe a bit of a return to the stuff they did previously. I went in wary but excited for what was to come, so what did we get with To Believe? Well, right out the gate, this was far more enjoyable than, to me than Mafleur. While there's some things it has in common, it is often going for some similarly warm and emotional atmosphere in many parts, but thankfully there's much better variety in pacing. The slower moments get a chance to shine because they're not surrounded by eight other tracks going for the exact same tone. I mean, the album does kind of start more or less with where Mafleur left off with the title track minimalistic guitar-driven piece with vocal accompaniment from Moses Sumney and not much more instrumentally going on besides some pianos and string pads in various parts. It did have me worried going into this album for the first time, but the fact that there's really only this track and maybe one or two others that feel like they're attempting that same kind of atmosphere allows them space to land with more impact. Perhaps unsurprisingly though, the tracks that I got more into were the more energetic and dynamic moments on here, like the second track, A Caged Bird Slash Imitations of Life, featuring Roots Manuva. That one pulled me in a lot more and did so much more to calm my fears going into the album. I, mean, I was already looking forward to hearing the rapper from All Things to All Men make another appearance, and he did not disappoint. And the fast-paced beats and orchestral tinge backing tracks behind him are really beautiful and expansive and really got me pumped up to hear what was to come. And they further kept me attention with the instrumental Lessons, another more energetic piece that might be the most energetic piece they've ever released to my knowledge. A nice meaty nine-minute cut with quick percussion patterns with lots of 
acoustic snare, drums rolling, and tambourines, various synth textures coming in alongside the usual strings and guitars, creating a kind of atmosphere that's in the same ballpark as, say, Airs Once Upon a Time or something. I should mention, by the way, that this album is easily their most electronic-sounding one to date, and any time they involve synth textures, they mesh really well with their overall sound. Anyways, then you got Wait For Now slash Leave The World featuring Tawaya, another more stripped-back vocal piece. It didn't really stick out to me in the track listing, but was still pretty enjoyable for what it was. Uh, Tawaya's performance was pretty passionate and engaging, and there's a lot of cool bell noises and whooshing electronic effects near the end that I liked a lot. And there was The Workers of Art, which was another neat instrumental, this time going again for a much more toned-down approach, with minimalistic synth textures and big string pads again. There's not much to it, but as one of only two instrumentals here, it stuck out to me basically by default, and I, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Zero One slash This Fantasy, featuring Grey Reverend, went for a much jazzier approach, still coming off very moody, but executing that mood quite well. Not much I have to say about that one. I suppose I am curious why there's three tracks on here that have two titles, but don't actually sound like two different tracks linked together. Maybe a Caged Bird slash Imitations of Life kind of sounds like it has an up-tempo part and a down-tempo part, but that's the closest one of these tracks comes to sounding like it actually has two parts. Zero One slash This Fantasy, like, where's the Zero One part? <laughs> Great Reverend says This Fantasy, like, less than a minute into the track, so never mind that, I'm, I'm just being nitpicky about labeling, I guess. <laughs> Finally, we close with undoubtedly the best track in the album, uh, the 11 minute A Promise, featuring Heidi Vocal. That is a track that most definitely makes use of its length, starting out with a cloud of synth patterns and fluttering high-pitched string sections, going on to bring in warm piano progression, staying in this sort of ambient phase for the first few minutes, bringing in really slow and subtle cymbal tapping three minutes in, so far sounding absolutely beautiful. But halfway into the track, it changes up into something else entirely, going into a much more energetic and lively phase, bringing in some fast-paced tambourines and a loop of little bongo textures in the background that admittedly sounds like a garage band loop I've used before. <laughs> But whatever, it's mixed really low and it's not the focus. Then in about eight and a half minutes, uh, some more hard-hitting breakbeats come in, slowly intensifying more and more, and finally semi-abruptly tapering out at the end and leaving me totally floored. Like, wow, that track was pretty awesome. Heidi Vogel's performance does appear to come secondary to the instrumental, uh, but she's a pretty good singer on top of everything else. So that's To Believe, and I will say I am definitely impressed by all of it. This is definitely up to the standards of the first two albums, even if instrumentally it does explore some pretty different territory. I guess the one thing I wonder about with this thing, though, is its replay value. Like, it may be true that I enjoyed pretty much every moment on this album, but I'm not gonna act like it delivered material the likes of which I've never heard before from any artist. I would not be totally surprised if this ended up kind of like that last Moby album, where I was initially impressed but didn't actually return to a single time after posting my video on it. I can see this being the kind of album that I'm going to be praising right now, but end up totally forgetting about halfway into the year or something. But, it did remind me that the cinematic orchestra was a thing at all. I hadn't thought about these guys in quite a while, and I will say that I'm glad for the reminder of the excellent material they've put out over the years, and this new album is very good. I won't act like I was mind blown by it, it's certainly not the most creative or out of the box material I've ever heard. I did enjoy the whole thing from front to back. I thought it was well paced, well produced, sounded fantastic, delivered pretty much everything I'd want out of a new cinematic orchestra album, right down to being an experience that didn't feel directly ripped off from their previous efforts while still adhering to their particular style. So take that all as you will. To Believe is a very solid and enjoyable project, and I'm overall feeling a 7.7 .7 out of 10. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. There are some people you want to add yourself to that list or make me a review something. Link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.